Hi there, I'm C, and it's good to see you again. I'm gonna be real with you right now. I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to make a video about this month. I kept jumping back and forth between different ideas. Maybe another mystery game, maybe a Pokemon game, maybe a random game that left a decent impact on me. Maybe I won't talk about a game at all and I'll just discuss my growing amiibo addiction. Ultimately, I just walked up to my game shelf and stared at it for a while. I asked myself a question. Is there a game that I feel strongly enough about to be able to ramble about it for roughly 10 minutes without needing to replay it to refresh my memory? And as it turns out, such a game did make itself known. Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo Tales was a game developed by HAND and published by Square Enix, releasing on the DS in 2006 for Japan and 2007 for everywhere else. For the longest time, this game was more or less my only exposure to the Final Fantasy series. I had no real interest in Final Fantasy, or RPGs not named Pokemon, but after seeing a friend play this game on their DS at school, I decided I really wanted it. And honestly, I don't remember why. But with the Chocobo series stepping into the light of day once more with a remake of Chocobo's Dungeon on the way this year, now might be a good time to revisit this little gem before I finally go ahead and experience a real Final Fantasy game. The story of the game picks up in a chocobo farm on a small island in the middle of nowhere, where a young white mage named Shermer is about to read a picture book to a bunch of chocobos. The most important one, however, is this little yellow dude named... Chocobo. Yeah, that's his official name. You can name him what you want, though. The story in question is none other than the Adamant Toys and the Cactor. Like I said, I have limited exposure to Final Fantasy, please forgive my mispronunciations. Story time gets interrupted, however, as Shermer's black mage friend Chroma shows up with some exotic picture book he's picked up on his travels. After you solve a puzzle to unlock it, it's revealed the book is not in fact a picture book, but instead is a tome that's sealed away super evil bad demon man Bibuzu. Bibuzu? Beezlebub? I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm gonna call him Bibazu. Anyway, as Chroma reads the words written inside, Bibazu is brought back to life, but his power is still sealed within the book, and for some reason he acts like a dog. Anyway, he decides to eat everyone on the island. Yeah, they're all dead. Well, except for Chocobo, Shama, and Chroma. And also, they're not really dead, and actually they've been sealed inside cards, as is revealed moments later, so I don't know why he went through the trouble of making it look like he ate everyone. But oh well. He also ate the books. All of them picture books Chrome has been collecting. Except he didn't. Because they're lying around the island. Wow, saying this back to myself really makes everything not make sense. Anyway, Bibazu apparently made the books magic, because now Chocobo can go inside of them and use them to perform miracles by filling in the missing endings. Have I lost you yet? No? Well, that's all you're getting. Chocobo's gonna go on a journey around the island to save his friends and stop Bibazu. If you want to know more, play the game yourself. Speaking of which, let's talk about the gameplay. There are three main gameplay styles to talk about when it comes to Chocobo Tales. Exploring the overworld, playing some minigames, and trading card games. Yeah! I like trading card games. The overworld is probably the most boring of these. For the most part, you're just sort of running around from place to place, controlling Chocobo with your stylus, because Chocobo Tales is one of those games that forgot the DS had buttons. Occasionally there's an overworld puzzle to solve, like a teleporter maze or something, but most of the time it's just point A to point B, with the action usually relegated to other gameplay styles. Aside from characters to talk to, minigames to play, and collectibles to find, like trading cards and chocobo cards, there's also apples lying around that you can eat for a hint on where to go next. I more or less never used this, seeing as the critical path is pretty obvious, but it could come in handy if you've left the game for a while and don't remember what you were doing when you come back. That's always nice, more games should have things like that. Minigames are really the main method of gameplay, although just calling them minigames is a bit misleading. They're actually separated into two separate categories. Minigames, which are found in magical picture books, and microgames, which are found scattered around the overworld. Minigames are the main form of progression in the game. You dive inside a book, see the opening of the story, and then play a minigame based on the story you just read. Said stories are all based on popular fairy tales, but with the characters swapped out for various Final Fantasy species. You've already seen the Tortoise and the Hare parody, 
but we've also got things like the Ugly Duckling being a chocobo who grows up to be a phoenix, the Boy Who Cried Wolf being about a leviathan, and the Pied Piper being replaced with a unicorn, Kate Seth, and a, a hamster. I have no idea where he fits into Final Fantasy lore, but I love him. As with the rest of the game, the minigames are controlled exclusively through the touchscreen, although many use both screens of the DS, either as one connected screen, or to have the controls on the bottom while the gameplay is on top. Most games can either be played solo, as a score attack or time attack, or against the AI, and I'm pretty sure it can also be played in multiplayer with other people who own the game. By clearing certain conditions in the minigames, you'll unlock stuff like trading cards, chocobo cards, or miracles! in which you'll see one potential ending for the story, and then something magical happens based on what happened in the ending. It's neat. Microgames are less neat. Played exclusively solo, microgames don't really progress the story at all. They're just a fun little diversion from the main story, although your mileage with that fun may vary. Usually based on something you can find in the environment, they're pretty quick-fire score attacks or time attacks in which you attempt to score either a silver or a gold rank. Silver rank nets you a trading card, and gold nets you a shiny plus version of the same card. And I don't really like them. Not the trading cards, I mean the micro games. Some of them are kinda of fun, but dang if it isn't frustrating trying to get the gold rank. You don't actually have to, though. Like I said, they have no real impact on the story, and you don't really need the plus cards. You can get by most of the duels using plain old not shiny cards, so unless you really want to go for 100%, you're probably better off doing as I do and just snagging the silver and moving on. Speaking of cards though, let's talk about pop-up duels. At some point during the game, a bad dude with bad grammar blocks your path and demands you beat him at a children's card game if you want to pass. Enter Jeweler X, a mysterious Moogle hero who totally isn't this Moogle you can find in town. He gives you a starter deck and teaches you how to play, and later on, lets you customize your deck with all the cards you find laying around. Here's how you play. You have three cards in your hand, and you choose one to play. Each card has four zones, which can either be attack zones or defense zones. Your card attacks the opponent using their attack zone. If the opponent's card has an attack zone in the same zone, you do half damage. And if they have a defense zone there, your attack just doesn't go through. Once the turn's over, your card becomes a crystal the same colour as it is, and some cards have abilities that require you have a certain colour and amount of crystals to activate them. If you play them when you don't have the right amount, they just sort of sit there doing nothing. First player to have their health drop to zero loses. It's pretty simple to understand, and honestly very luck based, but I do rather enjoy the little bit of strategy behind it. You can inflict statuses that double damage on certain zones, so if you have the right cards, you can set up a combo for massive damage. You get to see what colour your opponent's cards are, so you can try to plan out which card will hit a weak spot or defend against their attack zones. And of course, unless status effects get in the way, whoever plays their card first gets to attack first. So when it's coming down to the wire, it's important to act fast. So yeah, there's more to it than meets the eye, and it's important to try and make a balanced deck before a big fight. Unfortunately, they went and made this real neat battle system that, in my biased opinion, is a lot better than a fair few of the minigames, and then barely use it. There are a grand total of eight required battles, with a ninth optional opponent if you really want some variety. Now, you can rematch these opponents as much as you like, but, and bear with me because I haven't done extensive testing on this, but their decks don't change. Now, I'm not saying their deck composition should change between rematches, because that seems a little excessive, but what I am saying is that they should at least shuffle their deck. I remember going up against Jeweler X a few times in a row and realizing that he started with the same three cards in his hand every single time. Admittedly, I haven't actually tried rematching the other duelists over and over like that, because X is so much more convenient to get to, so I don't know if the others also have this problem, but it seems pretty dumb to give the master of pop-up duels such a glaring flaw that makes him not so fun to fight. I mean, come on, I just want to play trading card games. The final boss isn't even done with a pop-up duel, even though that's the way you've been fighting the entire game. Nope, that's done with what is probably the lamest minigame the game has to offer. Oh lord, does it suck.
It's got a neat concept, but it's kind of held back by the fact that the DS is single touch. That's all I'll say about that. That's probably where my gripes end, honestly. All gameplay stuff. Well, besides some of the picture books getting their endings muddled up, but that's a pretty minor thing. The main story is surprisingly engaging for what's obviously supposed to be a kid's game. Although, your mileage may vary there, I'm the kind of person that likes Poke Park, so I can't really speak from an adult's perspective. It does get darker than you'd probably expect though. I'm not gonna name names, don't wanna spoil it for you, but there are a few points that, looking back on it, kinda leave me thinking, why was that there? And why was it sad? It doesn't exactly come out of nowhere though. The game is a bit silly, and likes to joke around pretty often, but it knows when to be serious so the immersion isn't ruined. So when the heavier stuff hits, it fits in fairly well and feels like it's been built up to, rather than feeling like it's out of place within the rest of the narrative. I love it when games manage to do that. Been seeing a fair bit of it recently. I'm not sure whether I'd recommend picking this up if you saw a physical copy in the wild, to be honest. I mean, I absolutely love it. I even replayed it a while ago when we had a blackout, and it holds up the way I remember. But that's just me. And unlike another code, I feel like the people I'm addressing here on YouTube are probably a bit above this game's age demographic. But if you find a way to try before you buy, maybe watch part of a Let's Play or something, and it seems like something you'd be interested in, I give it my full recommendation. And hey, if Square Enix feels like revisiting other Chocobo games after Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, I certainly wouldn't mind if they came back to this one. Preferably the sequel though, that one never released outside of Japan. Thank you! Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want me to keep rambling about random ass video games that no one else cares about. If you like this video, you might like my last one too, so click on the card on screen to hear me ramble about the Another Code series. Okay, that's it. Thanks again. I'll, I'll see you when I see you.